All right, fans, I've got a first time guest with me today. He's a multi track record holder. He is a two time three hour figure eight champion with many other wins combined. He also has many wins at the track he'll be racing at this Saturday night. I give to you the driver of the number three T machine. It's Mark Tunney. Yes, sir. How's it going? Great, my man. How are you doing out there in Florida today? Not too bad. Want a little bit more sunshine, but uh, beats the uh, 12 inches of snow we got at home just yesterday. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll be all right without it. I can agree with you there. Uh, of course, we're out here in Colorado. We get snow pretty regularly, but what people don't understand is we get sun about 364 days out of the year. So it melts really fast and the temperature changes. So I love it out here, but I can totally agree with you. Indiana's uh, snow is rough. Yeah, it's uh, it's not. It's a good time if you're a kid. Once you get to that adult stage where you got all them responsibilities, it's just not as fun anymore. <laughs> yeah, I hear you there. Well, today we got Mark Tunney on the show because he's going to be participating in tomorrow night's three or excuse me, tomorrow night's World Finals Figure Eight at Showtime Speedway. And with that, Mark, we're going to ask you a few questions here on the Meat segment and the E's and B's podcast. Are you ready, my friend? Yes, sir. All right, man, let's get things started. Mark, tell my fans and listeners out there, how did you get your start in racing? Uh, I just have to say, I usually always say it goes back to just family. Um, you know, obviously, I remember uh, my dad and uncle racing. They always had just the best battles you could possibly imagine on a figure eight track. And <clears throat> before them was my grandpa and my grandpa's brothers. It was really where it started, I guess. Um I just didn't really get to see them, you know, in their heyday, but uh, speed drum has been around a long time. I think it's 90% um, sure it's the oldest running short track in America, still running anyway. And uh, they started way back in the day when it was back when it was dirt. And um, like I said, my uncle and my dad come up through there and my cousin, Ben, he's only uh, just a little over a year younger than me. And I mean, we just did everything together, anything racing wise, we were, we were into it and his dad obviously racing my dad racing you know we just grew up at the track uh that was our saturday night uh sometimes that was our friday saturday night and we were always in the garage during the week and um <laughs> it just wouldn't make any sense if we did anything else to be honest so uh it's just always what we wanted to do we were getting a hold of anything we can to race whether it was pushing around little cars or uh jumping on my grandpa's tractors anything Sure, sure. And I, we share a lot of the sim similarities. Uh, you know, I grew up the same way. My dad obviously was at Anderson Speedway when I was born. I was in the cars as a baby. I seen it, you know, growing up. And then, of course, my brother, my older brother, he's seven years older than me. He got into racing. We kind of got in it to, at the same time. And, you know, it just it's something that's hard to explain to people that don't go mm -hmm. racing or stuff like that. But I definitely can understand where you come from. It seems, you know, very familiar. Hey, tell me, what's your favorite thing about racing? Um, just probably the, uh, it's, I always say, well, you usually get to ask the question of favorite thing about figure eight racing. And I mean, to me, the, the answer to that is it's just so unique compared to what uh, a lot of the other things are out there. I mean, obviously, you know, I do like sports. I do like football, basketball and stuff like that. But um, and I did play those as a kid. But I just uh, the, the racing always had just a different type of competitive edge, I think. And, you know, obviously you put that together with a kid that wants to go fast and likes horsepower. Well, <laughs> you know, I just um, it's just what I wanted to do. So but the figure eight was always just, like I said, unique. I mean, when people you know, hear about it or see it, it's just different than the roundy round NASCAR or, or whatever. So, um, I don't know, I kind of feel a little bit extra special when you, you get accomplished in something that different. Definitely can agree with that for sure. For all my listeners out there, if you've never seen figure eight racing, please take a minute out of your day and check it out. It's the most intense racing in the world. In my opinion, it has you on the edge of your seat from beginning to the end. And we're talking right now with probably the best to date doing it. And that's Mark Tony of, of the number three T machine. Now, Mark, let me ask you this, bud. Who's your biggest rival? Um, 
rival wise as far as a friendly rival would be my cousin either way ben. It, it, okay okay yeah, <laughs> yeah my, cousin, my cousin ben yeah um friendly rival would be ben just because we grew up we started the same time i mean we basically our stepping stones were just uh, just about the exact same kind of following together and so whenever he hits the track i'm really i'm always asking about him you know to the crew oh what's what kind of times has been turning uh, if, if we get out on the track together, he's usually looking for me, he'll tuck behind me or I'll tuck behind him and see what we got. You know, we're, um, his, his level is just way up there. And if you can, if you're better than him on a given night, it's more than likely you're going to have a damn good run. So, um, as far as a not as friendly rival, probably me and Eddie Van Meter, I'd say, okay. I mean, it's, you know, it's mutual. I mean, I'm not on, I'm not going to talk anything bad about him. Sure. You know, he's, he's a, the hell of a driver, his awesome equipment, and he shows up to a racetrack, and he's going to be tough to beat. If you can beat him, you've, you've had a good night. So, um, yeah, those would be my two rivals, friendly and not as friendly. Sure, I can agree. And, and, you know, I go at it like this. You know, when I'm checking up, and it seems like it's been like this for the last maybe 10, 15 years, just on, you know, maybe – on the phone or with somebody else, like what's going on with the figure eight, you know, at speed drum, it's usually I'm asking what's Mark and Ben doing. And now right. it seems recently, you know, yeah, Eddie has stepped his game up. He's won a few oh, big yeah. races. You know, he, like you said, he's got some great equipment and yeah, I think personally, in my opinion, Mark, when you have somebody like that, not, not just Ben who is family, but when you have somebody outside the family loop, we should say that has good, good equipment, or if not better equipment, it only pushes you. And that's what makes this racing so much better. You know, the fact that we're not just only looking for what Ben and Mark are doing, we're looking for other fields because the field has yeah. picked up in the last few years, in my opinion. But yeah, when it, when it comes down to it, though, if I'm asking about figure eight racing, what's going on on a Saturday night or at the big track races, you know, I'm usually asking what's going on with the Tony family. Yeah. Mostly. yeah. And we're right. a pretty tight bunch. Yeah, definitely a tight bunch, a quick bunch. Great guys. If you've never met the Tony family, make sure you take a second out and, and go check out what they've got going on. They're great people. Obviously, as we got Mark Tony here on the E's and B's podcast you're listening to. Hey, Mark, as we're keeping it rolling, buddy, just got a couple more for you before I let you go and get probably things going for tomorrow night's big show there at Showtime Speedway. Yes, sir. This obviously is a little breakfast-related podcast, and I, I wouldn't uh, be right if I didn't ask. If you're making breakfast tomorrow for any racer or racing personality, <laughs> who are you making it for and what are you making? A racing personality. Or a racer. Uh, it could be either way. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, obviously, if I'm making breakfast, uh, it doesn't matter if I'm getting breakfast or making breakfast. It's got to be French toast. <laughs> okay. um, as far as a racing personality uh, or, or person, I've always wanted to hang out with Dale Jr., to be honest, um, you know, we, we don't really share much as far as in common with racing. Obviously, he's NASCAR scene and stuff, but uh, down, I feel like he's kind of the down to earth type of guy and stuff and tries to stay humble and everything. So I think we share a lot of those type of personalities. And obviously, he's got a lot of, uh, you know, he's got, <laughs> he's got his own racetracks everywhere and playing around and stuff. And that's the type of lifestyle I'd be be cool with having my uh, bank accounting set up that way so um if i could have a friend like that that'd be that'd be cool so yeah i'll make dale jr french toast any day <laughs> all right sounds great i can uh, agree exactly i think that if he was to actually check out some of the things you you and your cousin and everybody's doing in the figure eight world he'd be he'd be pulled right oh in, yeah i think, I think so. uh, that's yeah. my opinion he hey, appreciates me... good racing yeah, definitely. Always good racing. And yeah, like you said, everything he's got at his house is everything that I want as well, you know, <laughs> yeah. to go outside and just mess around, with, you know, go kart racing with your buddies or working yep. on a car and then this fancy. Yeah, it's all exactly what we would like. Hey, let me ask you this as we're, we're talking about fans and stuff, Mark, who's your biggest fan? Um, I've always said my mom, probably because it's from the very beginning. I mean, she uh more kind of behind the scenes fan i mean she doesn't ever go in the pits or very rarely goes in the pits um she um uh, i don't know she's always just been you know kind of my highs and lows always behind the scene trying to help me out and um you know talk to me about whatever i might be fighting with and stuff like that and uh she tries her best not to ever miss a race um 
And obviously my, my wife, Jennifer, she's, I mean, I couldn't ask for more of a supportive wife. I mean, really, I mean, a lot of, a lot of wives out there don't really care much for what we do, but she's always there. She's also behind the scenes, always supporting me in what I do and stuff. So between those two, I've got two biggest fans. I I'd say anybody could ask for. Awesome. Awesome. I can't agree more. Having your mother back you, your wife back you, that's the best feeling in the world as a racer and anybody or anything actually. So oh, yeah. that's great. Well, Hey, I got two more for you. I got one more racing and then I got a silly one to wrap things up before we'll, I'll turn the table over to you and look, talk a little bit about what's going on tomorrow night. Okay. Let me know, Mark, what's your racing goal in the next five years? Um, what, when you, when you ask about goals and stuff, and what we do, uh, the the three hour world figure eight at Indianapolis Speed Drum has got to be on everybody's list. Sure, or whether yeah. you've won one, two, three, four, or haven't won any at all, um, you know, like you said earlier, I've, I've got two of them. But um, you know, when when I won that one a couple of years ago, uh, you never know how how it's going to feel again or the first time. So really, winning it again, it almost seemed like it was more special that that time to not be the uh kind of the one hit wonder sure. <laughs> so you you so to so call it but um uh so that that's obviously on my goal in the next five years I, i'd like to you know jack dawsey jr he's got he's got seven of these things and <laughs> i mean he's arguably the best figure eight racer across the country you know i'm always pulling for my dad my dad's stats just trump so many people but uh jack's got all those three hours and you know if i can get up there on the list farther with him um and more next to him and stuff I'm, uh yeah I, you almost just it kind of be don't know really what to say about it you know you just um it, it does mean a lot to us what we do and stuff we're definitely not the uh, school bus uh demo derby type yeah, racers man. you know out there we're we're definitely the real deal. And, um, you know, but like right now, looking forward to this, I've got three of these Showtime uh, World Finals figure eight races that I've won. And um, I just, my goal is to click off another one of those, get number four and hit these big races and try to put my name out there and, you know, kind of solidify myself in the figure eight racing world. You know, I'm, I'm 35 years old. And you never know how long you're going to be able to do what we're doing um obviously we're just the blue collar type guys we you know things can happen and all once maybe you're not racing anymore so um if i could get myself up there and to where you know people down uh, down the road and in the future say oh yeah mark tenney was one of the best you know that to me means a lot just because of the family that i background that i come from and stuff so um five-year goal uh win more races and make them big and uh do it the right way be humble and um have a lot of fan base and stuff not to be the one that's hated I, i'd have never wanted to be that so sure. sorry i rambled there but no no uh, that's I, perfect man that's what yeah. i wanted to hear you know a lot of people don't ask these questions enough in my opinion and for somebody like you that I want to put you out here on, you know, on this platform and let more people see what's going on in the racing world. It's not just all left turns. There is some right turns when it's not just yeah. a road course. And, and, you know, you talk about the figure eight cars. A lot of people don't understand this too, Mark. There's a lot of money in those cars uh, oh, yeah. and they're not just your average race car. You can't just go to the junkyard and pick one of these no. up and put it together and be competitive. You got to know what you're doing. You got to have the right backing and, it sounds like to me, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I know this already, but you got to have the right team like you've got. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a complete package. You have to have every every little thing. So to, to be successful, you just have to. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, man. I got one more crazy question for you, and then I'll turn it over to you. We'll talk about showtime tomorrow night. But let me ask you this, Mark. Me and you are going to the movies tomorrow after the race. <laughs> and we're going to see a racing movie about your life. What's the okay. name of it? And who's playing you? That is a that is a really tough question. Um, <laughs> I've never been asked something like that before. Uh, who's playing me? I don't I don't know. Um, so to sidetrack off of that a little bit, Days of Thunder was always my number one racing movie, and uh, it was it was about as close I think you can get as kind of a real racing movie that wasn't almost looked at like a joke. Sure. So, um, um, 
I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm not a big Tom Cruise fan, but he did good as a race car driver. Um, I have to have somebody, somebody that was in the racing scene and man, <laughs> I have no idea who that would be. Um, it could be anybody now. It could be your I, favorite actor, somebody that maybe yeah. you think looks like you, anybody. I, I don't know. Well, okay. Uh, Christian Bale. He needs to grow his right. beard. He needs to grow his beard out, <laughs> right. and he needs to eat a couple cheeseburgers. Because <laughs> in, ba in Batman, he was pretty big, um, but then in the other movies, he's gotten kind of skinny. And he's—I think he's a British actor, but he's—he's he's an awesome actor. He's an actor, um, so he'll be able to yeah, figure it well, out. Well, and I think I don't know. He's—he's kind of got a. Um, I think he would probably be a pretty good actor to play me. I guess, like I said, if he grew—if he grew some beard and uh, bulked up a little bit on some cheeseburgers. Uh, I think he'd be pretty good. Um, What's yeah, the name the, of it going to be? Uh, um, <laughs> man. Um, like I said, that is the hardest question I think I've ever been asked. Um, um I got something with, it's gotta be something with, with an eight, you know what I mean? It, it has to be an eight of some kind, uh, um, crossing the eights or, All right. All right. Okay. um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, that's probably why I'm not in the movie business. Cause <laughs> that's all I right. Man. That's why we title. like to do this on this show. We like to yeah. take you a little bit off of the racetrack and, and put your mind in other places, but Hey, let's get back on the track and let's talk about what's going down tomorrow night, Pinellas park, Florida showtime speedway. Mark, are you ready for this? Yeah, hundred percent. Absolutely ready. I, um, it's a very unique track and, uh, we've been coming down here since 2013 uh, Robert Yoho is a squirrely promoter, <laughs> but man, I, I, but he is an awesome promoter. You guys, just about anybody that, you know, about him, it's like, oh, he's, you know, he's way out there. But at the same time, he, he puts on awesome shows, whether it's us uh, figure eight racers or anything else. I mean, he is all about the fans, getting them involved and wanting to know what they want to see to pack the stands. So um, I, couldn't be more pumped up about it like i said we're trying to go for redemption i guess uh last year just turned out terrible um uh, ended up um qualified well last february race and sitting there in the line ready to qual well before that was ready to qualify and motor just shuts off uh coil pack goes out change it but it was a change done after uh tech so I, they said, well, it was a change that you weren't allowed to make and you have to start at the tail. I think I qualified second or third, but um, I had to start at the tail coming up through there uh, and got caught up, got hit in the wheel early in the race. And it ended up breaking the shock on the left front along with a couple other things, but it was still able to keep going. Um, I got up to fourth uh, before we even hit lap 100, I think it was around lap 70 or something. And then all once the shock finally gave up on its own. And that was, that was that. And we come back a couple months later and ended up destroying a car, got hit in the intersection, right in the door. Mm -hmm. It was bent too bad to fix. So 2020s uh, Showtime Speedway racing was terrible for us. And we have to get redemption back on that. So um, going for number four, wanna, wanna, would like to break the track record and win the race. So that's, yeah. what we're, that's what we're trying to go for. That's what I'm pulling for too, my man. I know you pulled that track record out last weekend. And then, uh, yep. and my, now this is just my opinion. And I'm not putting nobody down, but a shaky, shaky invert, dude. I mean, come on. So, you're, being, <laughs> you're being penalized for going fast. Yeah. yeah mean, so my opinion, and this is just my opinion. When you have big money races like this, it, it if you're going to have any invert, it should be no more than six. And my opinion, yeah. if not, it should be straight up. I mean, you, right. you guys have put the time, the money, the effort. You're fast for a reason. Don't penalize you. That's my opinion. Yep. Yeah, and, you know, I we, we run for some reason. Uh, it's just, I mean, sometimes the racing is a lot better when there is an invert. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Um, obviously, the, the fast qualifiers hate inverts. Me being one of them, I, 
I try to, I never sandbag. I always try, try to get the fast time. And, um, you know, some of the, some other guys, it seems like it, it works out for them and, uh, they, they get a good, good starting spot. Now, sometimes it works out for me, but I've also had races where I've started last and, um, I've gotten all the way up to the front and won the race. So, you know, it, it can be done, but it can also, it makes it a lot harder. Um, it just <laughs> pulling a 12 was, uh, was pretty rough, but yeah, we, we all knew it was going to be an invert. I mean, we did, but, um, I didn't think it was going to be that bad of an invert. So in a one lane just, track, that's my opinion. That, too. that, that, that made it hard it, to made pass it, there. Uh, really really hard to pass we i think the last time our cars ran there was back in like 2009 something yeah. like that which I, I didn't go but um but yeah I, i'd like to see them put kind of like a martinsville type um curb where they got their grass you know in the turns gotcha. and stuff where yeah you can't you can't get in the grass but you also can't really cut under it or anything because it'll mess you up and that would keep guys off out, out of the dirt yeah. And that, that really hurt it as far as making it kind of a more of one lane track. So um, some changes be made a little bit when it comes to that. I mean, we haven't been there in so long. So we learned a lot as far as the promoters and everything. And, uh, uh, you know, maybe next year we come back and um, some things are changed and, and make for a better race. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure it was a wild race to watch. It was a wild know? race to watch. We're, yeah, definitely. But we're definitely a fast track. So but some changes made and I think uh, it'd be even better race next year. Well, me too. Well, I can't wait to see it, but I can't wait to see what's going down tomorrow night. Mark, before I let you go, buddy, I always give the opportunity to my interviewees. Is there anything you got to ask old Eddie B and also put yourself out there and promote whatever you got. Okay, bud. Yeah. I, um, no, uh, how, how long you've been doing this? You might've said that I, but I, this podcasting. I yeah yeah well i've i've been doing it since september i just started when the all the craziness obviously happened yeah. and you know obviously i'm a stay-at-home dad with the kids having to be homeschooled when all that was going on so i love right. sports i love wrestling i love racing and why not pass my time a little bit doing this so that's when i started doing this and i'm just uh you know trying to promote anybody out there that wants to put themselves excuse me put themselves out there especially you know the wrestling scene i promote all the indie wrestlers a lot of wrestlers out of uh, louisville and uh indianapolis and out here in colorado but yeah i've only been doing it for just a little bit of time and uh who knows what the future holds that sounds good man uh, appreciate that and uh if um if you got a shot to drive a race car what would it be now don't you don't have to say figure eight but um just any type of race car out there hey man here's well, the car take off and see what you got in five laps I, I have raced before i raced anderson speedway and i've raced uh yep. i i-25 speedway out here in colorado but uh, i've never raced a figure eight car and i've always kind of wanted to just because yep. we know the thrill and, and yep. everything that comes with it so i would love to get into one of those tea time cars and see what would happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They're a good time. Well, Mark, man, it's been an honor and a pleasure having you on the show this week. Good luck tomorrow night. Give them hell. Pedal to the metal. We'll be pulling for you here at the E's and B's. And I can't wait to have you back on sometime in the future. And we'll talk a lot more racing, dude. Sounds good, man. Hopefully we're talking about racing wins. I that's, like that. That's right. All right, everybody out there. If you don't got nothing to do, make sure you check out tomorrow night, Pinellas Park, Showtime Speedway, World Figure 8 Finals. This man right here in the number three team machine will be there. It's Mark Tunney. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Have a good one.